And we are now live on Facebook and on Zoom. We're welcoming in our attendees. Apologies for any uh, technical difficulties that uh, we've encountered. Uh, before the world of Zoom, this qualified as on time for a rally at the City Hall steps. Uh, and uh, we even had folks who, who were late coming over the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, that is a call I used to get. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, we have a hearing that will be led by our youth chair, Debbie Rose, and uh, we may even not let her uh, put, put her up as far ahead as possible so she can get to that hearing, along with so many others. Uh, I want to thank our public advocate, Jamani Williams, our borough president, Gail Brewer. Uh, we're joined by uh, Progressive Caucus members, uh, Carlina Rivera and uh, Vice Chair Carlos Menchaca. Uh, and we're all here because we'd like to see a budget from Mayor de Blasio that invests in our children and might even pay our children instead of just investing in policing them, because that's the last thing that we need. Uh, and I just want to thank all of the advocates who are here with us today. Uh, we're here to fight for Summer Youth Employment Program, also known as SYAP, to get fully funded in this year's budget. Uh, I also want to thank everyone who's joining us today. Uh, we're here fighting for our city's young people and for their futures. For a second year in a row, we find ourselves fighting for something that should be guaranteed, uh, something that a lot of us have been fighting for since we got elected, which would just be universal youth jobs. Uh, the Summer Youth Employment Program is something that many New York City's young people and their families count on. There's no question that last year's program cuts disproportionately harmed marginalized youth, including youth of color, youth with disabilities, and justice-involved youth. These are precisely the young people our city should be focusing on helping, no taking resources away from them. The benefit of these programs are immeasurable, and years past SYP has provided 75,000 New York City youth uh, the majority of whom were from families of color living below the poverty line with an opportunity for job training, paid work that helps support their families. The youth participate in the program work for nonprofits, for public entities, and the private sector. In terms of keeping people, uh, young people busy and doing positive rewarding work, it does not get any better than this. This experience these kids get is really invaluable. SYP is often the first employment opportunity for these young people who go on to leverage their experience when drafting college applications and applying for jobs. COVID-19 has led this administration to first propose to cancel SYP program with little warning to providers, I think it was on 48 hours notice, uh, who are prepared to make the existing program virtual. This should not have been where the city made its first cuts to the budget, especially if the savings programs were only 124 million on a budget of over 90 billion. To long fight, the city partially restored the youth employment initiative and named it SYP Summer Bridge. And it was only five weeks with the number of slots for young people cut from 75,000 to 35,000. The cost came out to about 51 million in public and private dollars. Fight's not over. We're still dealing with the effects of the pandemic. If we do not properly fund this program, we'll continue to harm a generation of young, underprivileged New Yorkers. Uh, COVID-19 has already taken so much from our kids. It took their school year, their graduation, their prom, and in many cases, family members. At this point, we can't blame the virus anymore. Our city is making decisions and young people are paying the price. We understand that the city has an eight or $9 billion deficit, but as the contracts chair, I can assure you the city has other places to cut waste to make sure SYP is saved. Uh, we need SYP, it is an important program. This is why when former council member, now Congress member Richie Torres and the public advocate pushed legislation calling for universal SYP before the pandemic, it's there to support them. And now they're proud to help them bring introduction 1474 cross the finish line to guarantee a job for every youth seeking one through this program as the new prime sponsor. Um, I'd like to now turn it over to public advocate Jamani Williams. Uh, Jamani Williams has been leading the charge on the importance of SYP since he was elected to the city council over a decade ago. Since becoming our public advocate, he has not stopped. He is a co-prime sponsor on introduction 1474 and last summer held multiple rallies calling for the need to save SYP. Uh, thank you so much, uh, council member. I know, I just wanted to say, I know Debbie has uh, to to uh, chair the hearing. So I just wanted to give the opportunity if she had to go, if that was okay, council member. That's so nice. Thank you, Jumani. Uh, no problem. Um, okay. Council so, is that okay with with the, uh, with Chair Kalos? Over to you. Okay, all right. Um, well, uh, thank you, thank you, Jumani, for yielding your time to me. 
uh, uh, I consider you the father of SYEP in, uh, in the city council. And uh, I really appreciate all that you've done to keep SYEP in, in the forefront of, of the budget issues in, in New York. Um, so good morning and welcome to everyone. I wanna thank public advocate Williams, council member Kalos, borough president Brewer and my colleagues, council colleagues, council members Rivera and Menchaca and to all of you who have helped us and have joined this fight. I wanna thank you all for being such vocal advocates for youth. And I'm honored to work with you to ensure that the SYEP program is fully funded. Um, I actually want more. And, and it is very important that we take this preemptive approach. So I'm really glad that we're doing this before uh, so that the administration can't say that they didn't know what, we, what we're looking for. In previous years, we've gathered on the steps of City Hall to raise our voices in support of SYAP. This year, the fight is even more urgent after an unprecedented year of immense loss, suffering, and financial struggles. We have a responsibility to protect the well being of our most vulnerable New Yorkers. COVID 19 has exposed and magnified generations of inequality in our city, and our youth have felt this the most. SYAP has a history of narrowing the inequality gap, uplifting young people who would otherwise struggle to access the labor market. SYAP also provides economic lifelines to, the, to our families. I know this personally because my first job was with SYAP. After nearly a year of, of remote and blended learning that have left many young people behind, our youth need SYEP more than ever. They have spent their time in isolation, away from friends and family, watching as the world changes around them. We have seen an increase in gun violence, child abuse, and the lack of access to mental health services during the pandemic, all of which are exacerbated by the loss of jobs and income for our young people. Our responsibility is to provide our youth with the social services that they need and meaningful employment experiences that will cultivate the minds of our future leaders. This morning, I will chair the uh, hearing on SYP, and we will listen closely to the administration and to the providers and stakeholders examining the role of SYP in our recovery. We know that difficult budget decisions will have to be made this spring, but let me be very clear. I have to say, let me be very clear. We will not balance a budget on the backs of our vulnerable youth. We are being preemptive and we will not allow this conversation to start off with youth services, uh, with a loss of youth services. We will be fighting for every day, just as we fought to save and expand summer programs in years past. During this crisis that has magnified the glaring disparities in our city, it is imperative that we provide a safety net for our young people before they fall even further behind. And that's a commitment that I'm making to all of you today. So I thank you all for being here. Thank you for raising your voices. Thank you for the energy that you're putting behind um, ensuring that we restore the budget uh, to the full amount. Um, and uh, I want to thank you. And I'll see you all at the hearing. Okay. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Ben, for organizing you and the public right. administrator. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Youth Services Chair Debbie Rose. She's been on the front lines of the uh, SYEP fight. Uh, and uh, she has oversight over DYCD. She's been a staunch advocate for SYEP during last summer's budget negotiations. She even made sure to take it to the mayor directly. Uh, and uh, we couldn't have a stronger champion. So uh, in eight minutes, please join Debbie at that hearing. Uh, somebody else who I know is attending that hearing who already got his introduction is Jamani Williams. Thanks so much, uh, uh, Council Member. I really appreciate it. Um, and I, I just want to tip my hat off to uh, Councilman Rose as well, um, who has been the youth chair for the past several years. And we had a second expansion uh, during that time. And she was able to uh, before the pandemic, make sure that it wasn't cut, that it was, it was actually expanded. So I just want to thank her 
and her abstention and, and all the colleagues who were here and the vote president who helped who have helped make this. Uh, when I came into the city council, it was about uh, 25 or 35,000 uh, summer youth jobs. Uh, we had about 130, 140,000 people applying. And that was a time where people sometimes were calling our young folks lazy and didn't want to do much. And we were able to point out they're actually applying for these slots just weren't there. Sadly, um, I was hoping I would have had a different discussion with this administration, but it seemed just as tough uh, to try to get the funding uh, for these jobs with this administration as it was with the prior administration. There was no appetite uh, at all uh, for uh, some youth, uh, uh, universal youth employment. And it was a struggle. And they told us that we had to make it the number one uh, priority, uh, which we did. Thanks to people who are on this call, uh, the Black Latino Asian Caucus, the Progressive Caucus, uh, the Borough President. <laughs> at that time, uh, we made it uh, the number one priority. And we had the biggest expansion um, at that time uh, a, without, sadly, the support of the administration until we forced it. Um, and then we had an additional expansion um, a couple of years later. And then uh, just yesterday, um, just last year, it was abruptly zeroed out. Uh, almost zeroed out, cut in half, uh, back to the levels that we had uh, when I first started coming in uh, to the city council. And for decades, it has uh, serviced the most vulnerable youth from uh, the lowest income communities, the neighborhoods and the communities who've been hit the hardest uh, by the health pandemic, by economic repercussions, uh, by other issues that we've seen Black Lives Matter uh, raise up, they've been hit the hardest. Uh, and we are helping them get hit the hardest again. Uh, the unexpected cancellation of SYP and the mayor's executive 2020 fiscal budget was a blow to tens of thousands of young people who were counting on the opportunity uh, these jobs would provide. And so I'm, I'm just so proud of uh, Councilman Michaelos for taking the lead on this bill, and I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of this bill. The mayor very much understood the need to have universality with pre-K, um, and it boggles my mind why he doesn't see the the need to have uh, universality when it comes to some youth jobs. Uh, in 2019, of the 74,400 uh, NYC youth, 85% of them uh, who self-identified, uh, self-identified as young people of more color. Uh, it's an invaluable opportunity uh, for people who are already systemically and uh, systematically marginalized. The COVID pandemic 19 uh, has caused New York City families extreme hardship. And cutting the summer program means they'll have one less resource to make ends meet. I also want to point out, we can't have this discussion without discussing the intersection of public safety. Uh, as a matter of fact, and people were so concerned about defund police, um, NYPD was the only department that wasn't defunded. Every other defund, any other department was defunded. These youth jobs were cut almost in half. And you can do the data research yourself. The number one way to cut violent crime arrests in half is a job, an eight week job does that. And so to have these discussions without the impact of public safety and then try to figure out what's going on and then possibly make the same mistake we always mistake and try to send police to solve the problems for everybody makes no sense. And my hope is that this, uh, this mayor in particular will get that at least on his way out uh, that we need universal sum summer jobs uh, in particular for economic hardships, but as a broader sense uh, to really address public safety if we really want to reimagine and redefine what public safety is in this time. Uh, I do want to just mention uh, the Youth Employment Program, which is another bill, hopefully we're here as well. That one's aimed at having a, a, a job program uh, irrespective of immigration status. And NYC Unity Works, which was funded a couple of years ago, before it even got started, uh, it was zeroed out. And that one was very specifically aimed at LGBTQ homeless youth, uh, some of the folks who have the highest uh, unemployment rates. These are what we need to be focusing on. This is a public safety issue, as well as addressing the economic hardship issue. And, and it sounds like we're gearing up again to make this a priority, which I'm, I'm so appreciative of for everybody on this call, in particular, uh, Council Member Kalos, who is the lead sponsor. So peace and blessings to everyone. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to now uh, turn to Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer and thank God for the Zoom mute feature because I'll actually get through the introduction without her interrupting me. Uh, Gail Brewer has been an ardent supporter of Summer Youth Employment Program and service providers for many years and has consistently advocated for the program to be fully funded. 
This past summer, she hosted a summer youth employment town hall together with some of the city's largest service providers to discuss ways SUIEP can continue to operate while meeting the needs of the city in light of the pandemic, noting that now is the time for creative solutions to keep this vital program going for youth of the city. Please welcome Gail Brewer. Thank you very much, Council Member Kalos, and certainly Jamani Williams, our great public advocate, and Council Members Rivera and Menchaca, and the young people who are on the call, but also more importantly, the advocates. I remember last year, I remember calling our wonderful chair, Debbie Rose of Youth, and saying, what the hell is this mayor doing in cutting SYEP? And then to the credit of everyone here and many others, some was put back. As the public advocate stated, this is the most insane program to cut. At one point, we did have 75,000. That's the kind of number we need now. And there certainly are other places to cut. There's a hope for state and federal dollars to supplement. We have got to do that kind of number. I don't need to tell you, but in the call yesterday with young people and educators, the, the deep depression of young people is real. It's not just something that um, has been discussed. It's so real. And that's what we have to focus on because those young people who have been sitting at home Zooming need to have a different kind of outlet. And there's nothing better than a job. So I'm here to say thank you for uh, putting this together, uh, Council Member Kalos, and to say that last year was only a partially funded SYP. It was a beginning. It is only the, the cellar and the foundation from which we need to work. Um, I don't want to talk about how the pandemic has impacted young people. The call yesterday has had a major impact, the way in which people are talking. Suicide is real. Um, all of these challenges that have been faced by parents are multiplied when you talk about the young people. So we have to do our bit to make sure that SYEP make, have, gives young people the opportunities to learn new skills, explore careers, and make some money. I have to say, and you know this, that every single job that a young person gets gives them an entree into something in the future. Thousands of creative, intelligent, successful New Yorkers have had their beginning at SYEP. Um, so I'm here to say it's a lifeline. It must be fully funded by the administration. When I say fully funded, I'm talking 75,000 jobs. We know that any young person who has a summer job um, should get, will be a success in the future. They need to be provided one. And certainly I support intro 1474, establishing a universal job program for young people. It's that creativity, it's the energy. That is what makes our city hopeful. And so we as elected officials and colleagues in government and the amazing advocates on this call, we are ready to do everything in our power to support uh, you for this legislation and equally to support funding for SYEP. I was part of the Dinkins administration. And one of the legacies, may he rest in peace, David Dinkins, is cops and kids. That's the only way, as we heard earlier from the public advocate, that we're going to get the number of shootings and killings and gang related, anything that involves young people, how do you solve it? It's with a job. It's certainly with some of the uh, violence interrupted programs that again, Public Advocate Williams as a council member initiated, but it is most importantly with the program like SYEP. And then we have to make sure that DYCD, Department of Youth and Community Development, administrated, administers it in the proper way. That's another challenge. Thank you very much. Great to have this discussion. Insanity that took place last year and then should never, ever take place again. Thank you very much. Thank you to Manhattan Borough President uh, Gail Brewer. I'd like to now turn it to a, a fellow member of the Progressive Caucus who has uh, participated in fighting for SYP uh, now as a council member, previously as a staffer, before that as a community board member in countless town halls, conference calls, rallies, uh, championing SYEP, particularly this past spring with challenges of operating remotely. Please join me in welcoming Carlina Rivera. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Hi, thank you, Council Member Kalos. <clears throat> I'm Carlina Rivera. I represent District 2 in the City Council. Of course, uh, I have thanked Ben. I, I want to thank Public Advocate Jamani Williams 
And of course, um, my colleagues who are here, uh, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, and of course, Debbie Rose, who has really led the way in making sure that we start fighting for this program very early in the year. I, I'm sorry that we are here again, fighting for the full funding of the Summer Youth Employment Program. And here to also express my support for intro uh, 1474 to establish a universal youth employment program here in New York City. I was proud to join the fight against Mayor de Blasio to save SYEP from cancellation this past summer. And the value of this program cannot be overstated. SYEP is an economic lifeline for the low income youth of New York City and their families. And we must and will pursue full funding in the next city budget. I've said it before, I'll say it again. We cannot make cuts that hurts those who have experienced devastating loss and economic hardship even before the pandemic. And now with COVID-19, people are really suffering. The proposed universal youth employment program, it would follow the SYEP model, which we know works, and it will introduce a year long program, an expansion that is long overdue. Employment opportunities for young New Yorkers tell that tale of two cities. Those with personal connections who find extracurricular work in the private sector and then their peers who cannot. So the majority of SYEP participants are youth of color. In 2019, 81% of participants were Black, Hispanic, or Asian. SYEP has also employed NYCHA residents, youth who have interacted with the justice system and youth in foster care. The Universal Youth Employment Program, it would also serve to further close the opportunity gap for students coming from schools, coming from environments that lack adequate resources in providing career exploration and personal and professional development. I was one of those kids, right? I needed a job to help my family, struggling single mom so she can help survive. I'll never forget the feeling of my first check, every cent I made as a young person. I had to buy school supplies. I had to pay for transportation. Sometimes I treated myself, right? You get that polo sweater or whatever makes you feel good. But the point was that, that was a lesson. That was pride. And that was support from my community that pushed me to continue to, to participate. And so as we continue to prioritize equity in our approach to COVID-19 recovery and jobs training, we have to include all New York City families in our efforts, and we have to include the young people who are eager to participate. And this is how we can get it done. I'm very proud to be here. I continue being vocal on this issue, and I want to thank all of the advocates and the young people who come in who will share their story and who have shared their experiences so we can finally fully fund a critical program for New York City. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Rivera, for sharing your story. Uh, it, it is moving. I'd like to now uh, welcome uh, Vice Chair of the Progressive Caucus, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. He's a member of the City Council's budget negotiating team and chair of the Immigration Committee. Carlos was vocal last year when the mayor introduced his budget proposal. His position was clear, standing against increasing funding for the NYPD at the expense of education, housing, health, and jobs, particularly youth jobs. He actively engaged with youth during the budget process and was a champion for saving SYEP. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Councilmember Kalos, uh, Public Advocate Jumani Williams, Carlina Rivera, uh, Gail Brewer, all the incredible electeds who are here today. We're standing uh, proud uh, to be with you. And I guess. I, what I want to add is, is something different. How are we going to win this year? And the truth is, is that one of the most beautiful things that happened last year was the power of the youth with incredible voice that pierced through the conversation and allowed for us to hang our, our ideas on. Uh, it was the youth that brought to me this idea that it was not only wrong to cut SYAP, 
but that the intersection of public safety was in your hearts and minds as well, that more police, because the police was not cut at all in the preliminary budget, in the executive budget, and in the final budget. And so more police does not equal public safety was something that you brought to us, but we failed. This city council failed to bring you what you needed. And we are again starting this path and we got to change it. And so how? What I want to do is focus on the how. What we learned was that you are all incredibly powerful with your voices and that you moved us. You moved us so much that some of us were, were saying stop with the conversations already. Uh, we're going to do our best. So we need that again. We also learned that the city council can pass its own budget. And we were almost there. We were almost going to construct a city council, a people's budget, a city council led budget and pass it. But we didn't go all the way. We got to go all the way this year. And we need your help to sound the alarms. This week, the mayor is going to announce his preliminary budget, we will, where we will all be not surprised, but disappointed. If we do not move in a different direction and get that pressure from the ground, from you all, we will, we will, we will return to the old scripts and we will return to the old strategies and we will fail again. I do not want to fail again. We have so many conversations that we need to have uh, that start with SYEP um, and end with defunding this NYPD, uh, universal basic income. Uh, Green New Deal. There are conversations right now in this political air that are on your minds and in your hearts that need to see it in the city council budget. This mayor will continue to disappoint us and nobody now, not even us, can say, well, we can give them another opportunity to show a different light, to show a different face, to show a different strategy. That is not going to happen. We need you to push us to make this happen or we will fail you again. The other thing that we learned is that you needed the money earlier. You needed a signal from the city that you were gonna get, and this is, I'm talking to the organizations now, uh, that you were gonna get funding so that you can prepare. And what we gave you was funding that you couldn't even use. These are the failings of government that cannot happen again because we have learned, and in any failure, we have the opportunity to get better. So let's get better, let's get better together. And I'm calling on my council colleagues to take these words and to take your words and make it happen. I'm ready, I hope you are, I know you are. Let's do this, thank you. Thank you to council member Menchak. I imagine some, we might be losing some of our uh, council colleagues who are on the youth services committee to join the hearing. So we'll thank folks, uh, welcome to stay and uh, we're now going to turn over to advocates and actually uh, one person in particular who is actually an SYEP alum who I'm really excited to hear from. But let's start. Uh, I'd like to hear from uh, JT Falcone from the United Neighborhood Houses, an SYEP provider. JT is a policy analyst at UNH where they focus on developing and promoting the organization's neighborhood affordability portfolio, which considers affordable housing, economic and workforce development in New York City. Please join me in welcoming JT Falcone. Hey there, thank you, Council Member, and, and thank you to the folks, um, including Council Member Kalos and, and uh, Public Advocate Williams, who, uh, who, who organized and joined today. I think this is so important um, to get out ahead of this and make sure that, that we don't face some of the same challenges that we faced last year. Um, so I, I'm here today representing United Neighborhood Houses, uh, the membership organization for, for New York Settlement Houses. Um, and, and we wanna call on the administration to immediately commit to a full restoration of 75,000 SYP slots this summer. Um, last year at the height of a global pandemic, the mayor announced plans to fully eliminate SYEP. Um, after we took a minute to deal with, with the shock of, of such, <laughs> such, I don't know, such a bananas idea uh, at that point, um, we, we joined alongside young people providers, advocates, and, and a lot of the elected officials that we see here um, to push back. SYEP is a critical program that serves low-income communities of color primarily. And to balance the budget um, on the backs of those young people and their communities only compounds the inequitable impacts the pandemic has had and um, the impacts that some systemic racism uh, that, that the pandemic has exposed. Um, through our collective advocacy, we ultimately saw the restoration of 35,000 slots, 
but as, as Councilmember Menchaca just stated, um, it, was, it was too little and it was too late. Uh, over 150,000 young people applied for the 75,000 slots that were available in 2019. Um, and that was before we saw all of the impacts of the pandemic, right? So I can only imagine the number of young people that, that are, are seeking these types of services now. Um, and I, I also wanna shout out the borough president because I think the pointing to the mental health impacts of this pandemic and SYEP as a solution for that, it, it's, it's so important and I, I don't hear that rhetoric enough. So I just, I appreciate that and, and you bringing that to the fore. Um, United Neighborhood Houses will continue the fight alongside all of you. Uh, we push for a future where every young person who applies for SYEP is given an opportunity to engage in career exploration, get critical job experience and reap the, the educational, the emotional, the social benefits of participation in, in this critical program. And so just thank you to all of you for being here today. Thank you to the elected officials. Thank you to the young people. Thank you to the advocates. Um, I really, I can't wait to, to fight for this alongside all of you again. Thank you, JT. Uh, now we are joined by uh, Carlin Cowan, a fierce advocate from Chinese Planning Council, uh, who is also an SYEP provider. Uh, Carlin is the Chief Policy and Public Affairs Officer at CPC and leads various initiatives for the country's largest Asian American social services organization, which helps 60,000 New York City residents. Uh, please join me in welcoming Carlin Cowan. Thank you for the wonderful intro to CPC Chair Kalos and for hosting this hearing. Thank you also to uh, the council members, Borough President Brewer and Public Advocate Williams for being here and for your strong support on this issue today. One of the things that our staff always say about SYEP is that SYEP is actually as much a part of the teenage experience as prom or graduation is. It's not only a critical learning experience for our young people, but it is a absolute economic lifeline for immigrant and low income communities. And it creates community for our young people. But the city simply hasn't treated it like that. And we saw that last year more than ever. We faced devastating cuts to SYEP programming at a time that it was needed more than ever. CPC usually offers over 3,000 young people employment and a safe space for the summer each year. And as the pandemic hit and our staff got to work coming up with creative ideas for how they were gonna provide safe engagement for our young people in remote environments um, and new ways of providing SYEP, instead we had to tell them that the program was being cut and over a hundred staff were gonna lose their jobs. In the midst of the biggest mass unemployment crisis that, that we have faced in a long time, I cannot tell you how devastating it was as an organization to tell our summer staff and our young people that we could not provide them the employment and the community that they always counted on. And the thing is the impacts didn't just extend to our young people, but our ties to their families, their entire families were severed at a time that they needed us more than ever especially for immigrant young people, it is often the young people that are the ties to their limited English proficient parents. And so we, as best as we tried to maintain them, lost ties with many of our community members because of the loss of SYEP. At the exact same time that all of this was happening, the city stated with the budget that was passed that their priority was policing our young people instead of paying them, instead of training them, and instead of providing them community space. We simply cannot let this happen again this year. And that's why I'm so glad to stand with all of you to call for full immediate funding of SYEP and a bigger universal jobs program for all young people. That is the future that New York needs and it's absolutely critical. Our young people are facing challenges that are completely unprecedented and that no young people should ever have to face. We're hearing from them that not only are they navigating remote learning and social isolation, but they're helping their families who might be facing eviction, navigating new information in languages that their parents don't speak. We've heard from young people that they're rationing food for their families or trying to be in school while going to pantry lines. And we've heard so many increased reports of depression and suicidal ideation from young people who are struggling through this. And our community-based organizations are hanging by a thread. This demand for our services has skyrocketed while our budgets have been cut. And if we cannot get this funding for SYEP secured early, we simply won't be able to do it. 
We need to fully fund SYEP from the start. And recovery from this pandemic is going to require transformational change. And so we're fully in support of this universal program. It's what our young people need. It's what our communities need. Thank you all for being in this fight. Thank you, Carlin. Next, we'll hear from Diamond Butler from Global Kids, an SYAP provider. Diamond is a community school director at Global Kids, whose goal is to educate, activate, and inspire youth from underserved communities to take action on critical issues facing our world. Please join me in welcoming Diamond Butler. Good morning. Thank you, elected officials, organizers, and my fellow advocates. As community school director, I was the one who had to take the phone calls when the news hit. I was the one who had to speak to families. Please do not put us in position to make such calls once again. As Global Kids prepared for the summer, we set out optimistic that in the midst of a global pandemic, we would be able to give hundreds of jobs to young people. Once the program was taken away, the devastating news almost took the hope out of our young people, thinking that they would have gainful employment and experience, a glimmer of light in the midst of all of this. Although the program was restored partially, what that meant from us was opportunities that we were planning to give to hundreds of young people being limited to 60. When you hear the number of partial restor uh, restoration it makes you think, well, at least the program was able to happen. For our end, that meant now we had to delay the news. Yes, it was restored, but we still do not have space for you. What news to receive as you are in the midst of trying to navigate this world? Our young people feel as though they are being punished at this time. Please do not add to that by taking away funding from such a prominent program, such as SYEP, which has been the fabric of New York City youth for many years. For some, it may just be a matter of slots, a matter of switching numbers. But for us, it is the shifting of families. It is the shifting of programming. It is the shifting of messaging that you give young people once you are put in a position when you have to disappoint some and reward the others. There's a proverb that says, how are the children? The response is supposed to be, the children are well. If we are making decisions that we know will negatively impact our young people, are we truly able to say that they are well? Please consider these actions to fully restore SYEP programming so that us as providers are able to give these opportunities to our young people for this will impact families in such a way. This will impact their future in such a way. For some, it may just mean a matter of a couple of weeks of disappointment. For our young people, it is an opportunity that's taken away from them, that puts them in a position to wonder why. Why am I being punished during a time like this? Put them in a position to wonder, well, what will I put on my resume as I apply to colleges and other jobs? Put them in a position to wonder, will I hear more no's? So I ask, I plead that you fully restore SYEP programming. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, powerful words from uh, Diamond Butler. Uh, next off, we will hear from a junior at the University of Rochester, hailing from Harlem, uh, George Morales, attending New Heights Academy Charter School and has he attended New Heights Academy Charter School He's worked with Teens Take Charge for the past three years to fight for increased summer employment access, having not been accepted when he applied as a teen. Please join me in welcoming George Morales. Thank you, uh, Council Member Callis, and thank you to the elected officials that were present today. Um, my name is Jorge Morales. I'm a junior at the University of Rochester, Teens Take Charge alum mentor, and was one of the leaders for TTC Save SYEP campaign last year. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about how essential these opportunities are for young people because I think everyone in this call, everyone present here is well aware of that, um, and, and especially now more than ever. I'm, however, going to talk more about how officials must do a better job for our youth and for the future of our city. 
Um, our campaign last year resulted in the reinstatement of 35,000 slots from the original 75,000. The youth went out of their way to plead for these opportunities and this was how they were treated. Last year, over 130,000 youth had the chance to apply to Summer Bridge. And I say had the chance to because many of our youth did not even know that the program was reinstated due to the lack of communication and the shortness of the application's availability. These were some of the, some of the issues that must get addressed in order to ensure that the youth receive what they deserve. How long will the youth have to wait to be a priority? How long until the public officials realize that the youth are the future and that we must act now in order to create a greater future for all of us? This time, we must ensure that that uncertainty does not occur. We must ensure that SYEP is secure and that the youth, are, that the youth are part of its development process. We must ensure that every youth that wants to get a job can get that job. We, make, we must make sure that these opportunities are helping our youth grow. Youth programming is not a cost, it's an investment, an investment that is more important now than ever. And as David Dinkins once said, um, when the future of our young people are at risk, so is the future of our city. So thank you. Thank you, uh, George Morales. Uh, our last speaker, uh, and certainly not least, we are joined by uh, Joseph Coborn, a former SYEP participant and alum of the program and a current CUNY student. And we may have saved the best for last. <laughs> thank you very much. First and foremost, I would like to thank Councilman Kalos office for definitely inviting me to this. I'm a proud CUNY student and also former president of Queens College Student Government and a former SYEP participant. Uh, I do not want to go into depth because we have definitely covered a large portion of the aspects on why it is fundamental to fund SYEP for um, our urban youth. But I what, what I do want to acknowledge is the, um, the youth that SYEP help comes from a low socioeconomic background, um, st students of color. And when you look at the economic crisis that we have to deal with in New York City, even in a two parent household, working full time with the cost of living, that funds is not enough. And as I experienced as a youth in high school, at our age, we're not really eligible to get certain jobs. So for most students, SYEP is their only option. And I just wanna to touch on the fact that I always, I'm puzzled at the fact when it comes to supporting on the youth, when it comes to matters of free education, SYEP. It's always this big debate when in reality, it should go without even a discussion because when you think about it, it is the residents and the youth of the inner city who stay here for the next five decades. We're the ones who become the foundation of this great city. So when you plant a seed of support, you are also planting a tree that will grow to become this foundation that will grow to lead and help the continuation of this great city, which is why it's very important to fund SYEP and help urban students. Because when you think about the financial toll, a lot of their tolls, a lot of their money is not only used for fun and um, extracurricular activity. A lot of these funds go towards helping the family members out because they're um, coming from a low socioeconomic background. So when you do this, you're definitely not only helping us, but you are helping your city as a whole. I wanna thank everybody here on this call who are strong advocates for um, the SYEP program, because even though you might not be on the front lines or you know your message might not be projected as much, we know as students and we appreciate you for everything you are doing right now for us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Joseph Coborn for sharing your story. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with you. I, I ran for student government president at my SUNY and I did not win. So uh, I imagine you will be able to run for office quite shortly and likely do much better than I ever did. Uh, so I, I'm excited. And before that, we have to win this battle. If you like what you've heard and want to add your voice, please use social media, use the hashtag SaveSYEP. Now, almost all of our panelists have stuck around to answer questions or are invited to raise their hands to signal they will answer questions and mute themselves and jump in. 
At this point, we're going to open up to attendees. Members of the pre press in particular are invited to raise their hand to ask any questions they might have. I know we have a number of members of the press, but I'm not seeing any hands going up. Somebody named Jamani, he got his hand up. He's not a member of the press, Carlina, not yet. Uh, I'm gonna call on Angela, and I'm sure that Jamani will wanna answer that question. So Angela, I'm gonna ask if you can talk. I'm asking if you can unmute. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. So I've listened to everything that you said, and it's not really a question, it's a, it's a thought. I want to understand what happened. I went through SYEP. I, yes, I was in Summer Youth when I was 14. I got my first job with the Summer Youth Employment Program. And I tutored children. I worked in a daycare where I tutored children. I've gone on to college. What I don't understand is what happened in our society that jobs that used to be jobs that young people could have, have now disappeared. At 16, I had a job in a supermarket as a cashier. I worked part-time and on weekends I had full-time and in the summer, they kept me on full-time. So I understand I definitely understand the need and the relevance for having SYEP, the program. But what about outside employment? You learn, I learned a lot. I learned how to do bookkeeping when I got the job because I used to help log, uh, cash out at night with my employer. I then ended up going to college to study accounting because that was what I thought I wanted to do when I first got there. It may not be where I ended up, but it was, it gave me a purpose and a direction. So how can we change the dynamics where young people can actually get jobs at 16 in private industry? Thank you. Uh, Jumani has his hand up, so I will see if he wishes to answer that specific question. Oh, I just wanna say, see what happens when I follow instructions. You said, put your hand if you're willing to answer questions. So I just... That's why I don't follow directions most of the time. <laughs> um, I thank you for that question. I'm not sure if it was a, a press person or not, um, but uh, it, there's a lot of decisions that folks make um, when it comes down to uh, financing. And very often I think they, they make the wrong decision, the penny wise and the pound foolish. And there's been a lot of thought about um, what communities need and don't need. And I think very often uh, we think that police are the answer to almost everything that is happening in society and it simply isn't. And so we've had to fight battles on what we know keeps communities safe and, and healthy. Uh, and sadly, uh, that's a battle we had to fight under uh, the former administration uh, of Michael Bloomberg uh, when it comes to this issue. It was a battle I, I hoped we didn't have to fight when it came to uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio. Sadly, we were wrong. And so uh, the people you see here, including the advocates, uh, who were hit hard as well, uh, as was mentioned. Especially, I think they were, they were, I don't even know if they were given 24 hours notice uh, that, that this was going to be cut as they made preparations. And so it impacted a lot of people, in, even in, in people who themselves were employed to administer this. Um, um, the, the mayor made a calculation that it wasn't important. So it's just a battle of what is important and what has to be a priority. And the people you see here and you heard from agree that uh, some of these employment is uh, a priority that we have to, that we have to fund. This is a battle that you know discussions is happening all over the, the country what is what isn't what is needed what isn't needed and uh you know and you've heard from everybody how important it is so we're really trying to fight and it's you know like sometimes people dismiss the importance with, of what they used to call soft skills uh, but i call it essential skills it teaches essential skills that people need uh in life and it starts a, a bad trajectory of life when you start taking away all these opportunities so Hopefully uh, we'll win this uh, battle again uh, with the folks who are on the screen and other folks. Thanks. Okay, I wanna thank the public advocate for addressing that question. I'm not seeing any members of the press raising their hand. If folks have additional follow-up, please feel free to reach out to any and all of us directly. I wanna thank everyone who participated today. Uh, we have a hearing to get to, so thank you. And we will 
Tomorrow, the, the mayor will be releasing his uh, preliminary executive budget and he better restore funds to SYEP. Otherwise, we'll be right back here again until he gets it. Thank you to everyone for their leadership and let's get this done. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Have a good day.